It is Ivy Concrete Catwalk. Those of you who are new, I am a reseller who loves all things vintage, new, newly new, pre-loved, estate selling, selling, you name it, I love it. My catwalk is mwah. Those of you who are newly subscribed, thank you so much for coming along together as we go along on this journey. I'm going to get right into this. I need to give a shout out to a lady who we mutually follow each other on Instagram. We started a dialogue back and forth because she has a love of Chanel. She gave me a very good idea of something that I want to share with you guys. You go on over to Instagram, check out her Instagram page, The Lux For Me. She is on Instagram. Go and give her some love. She's got some pictures posted of some Chanel pieces that are great, her style is great. I wanna thank you, the Lux, for me because you are instrumental in this topic and it's something that I think a lot of us don't really talk about in this arena of loving luxury and buying designer things. What you see is not necessarily what is going on behind the scenes. I don't wanna kinda of convolute this any further, I just wanna jump right into it. You guys know, I have something that I really wanna talk about I come with notes, but this discussion is a little bit deeper than that. They are tips, but they're not necessarily tips. They're actually life hacks, but then they're not exactly life hacks. It's just real on real and having a discussion with you guys about what would be the beneficial thing to do when you are aspiring to wanting luxury things, designer pieces in your life, and the reality of what that really means for yourself. The first thing preparing for purchasing luxury, save. And when I say save, I am not talking about the luxury item or items or designer thing that you're interested in. I'm talking about save for yourself, save for your future. Invest in yourself, pay yourself first. Meaning if it means putting money aside in a 401k or putting money in a 457 or putting money in certificates of deposit or investing in the stock market, pay yourself first. No luxury item is going to give you that type of return on investment. The way putting your money aside, the old fashioned way of letting it work for you will. Respect and love yourself enough to create a solid fiscal foundation so that whatever you decide to do further on, buying luxury and all this stuff, is easy and it's not complicated. Let's get on to the next when it comes down to affording luxury and designer goods. The second is save for your luxury purchases. And when I say save, it's more in line with being prepared. If you look back at past videos that I have done about making luxury purchases, I always have a separate fund set aside so that if something comes up, and I see it and I am able to make that purchase, I am ready to go because the funds are already there. So let's just say two months go by, three months go by, a month goes by and I don't see anything that I'm interested in. That is a-okay. I am suddenly making contributions there and may decide, oh, if something pops up and I would like to buy it, then I'm able to buy it. And this brings me into tip number three, quality over quantity. One thing that I learned about myself in this journey with owning luxury goods and designer goods is that those things, they come a dime a dozen. If you're interested in something and then next week your focus changes to something different, I have learned from myself, it is better to sit it out and think about what it is you would like to have, what is the absolute drop down finite thing that you want to add to your collection. So let's just say you're interested in wanting to own an Hermes Birkin bag, then why run out and buy 50 Fendi's or five Gucci's? If you know your ultimate dream bag is a Birkin bag, save for the Birkin. It is the quality over the quantity. So if that's your holy grail bag, let that be your holy grail bag. Listen, you guys, I'm, I'm speaking from experience, having bought things and then wondered why do I have this in my collection when it's not exactly something that I want. Can't tell you the amount of times that I made purchases 
and then regretted it later on because I had this bag and there was no connection to why I even bought the bag in the first place. So don't do that. Give yourself the ability to focus on the one piece that you really, really would like to have. Make your purchases based upon why you want it, the quality of it, the things that go into why you want to carry the bag versus because you can't get it at a certain point in time, you just run and you buy something in place. Don't do that. You guys, you know, I am a clearance discount queen. I do not want to, if I can help it, I do not want to spend full price on whatever that luxury bag or that designer shoe, whatever it is, may be. If you watched my video where I talked about my best purchases of 2022 and you saw those Fendi dad sandals, those Teddy dad sandals from Fendi, I waited until those sandals dropped from $1,000 and came all the way down to something that I felt was more reasonable and got them for $330. If it is something that you are adamantly wanting, wait, 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 and see what happens with the price tag. I understand it is a teeter-totter, especially if something is popular or something that a lot of people would like to have, and it's the fear of missing out on. I find the less I focus on what it is that I think I might be wanting, the better my chances of finding that item on sale. Take your emotions and all of that out of it and just learn to wait and watch the price of said whatever it may be drop. This goes for whether it's coming from retail or whether it's coming from pre-love. You guys know the bags that I've scored pre-love by simply waiting and watching and search around. Look at the different sites and price compare to see what's out there, what's on sale, what could potentially, you guys know the Chanel bag that I picked up, that nylon bag was $9,000 on first dibs, you guys. There's no way. I can, I'm not gonna drop that kind of money on a bag. Maybe $9,000 on a luxury vacation, absolutely. But on a bag, no. Next thing is this, looking for things look for luxury designer things that are going to make you happy this is not a competition it's crazy how sometimes when there is a particular luxury bag or designer piece that comes out people go bananas and they are i don't even want to say fighting but they're literally clawing over each other to try to see if they can't get to it first it is not a competition for this stuff. There is so many different choices and selections of different bags from different offerings, not just bags, but just designer things in general, where you, you do not have to be in competition with anyone. If anything, this is about personal style. It is about what makes you feel confident, what makes you feel comfortable, what is gonna enhance your wardrobe, things that you are interested in, in terms of adding to your beginning or growing collection. Take your time with it. This is a marathon. It is not a sprint race. Collecting and building a beautiful wardrobe is something that takes time and it is not something that can be done overnight because I feel if you rush into buying all of these pieces, you will not have the type of a seamless, consistent, I keep going back and wearing this year after year after year type of a wardrobe and then you end up with an abundance of things that you may not even utilize. You guys, I'm speaking from experience, been there, done that, and that is not how I choose to shop real time today for luxury designer goods, bags, shoes, things that I like. I take my time and I am also much more curated in what I introduce into my wardrobe because there is no race for it. Two more quick things about this whole thing with hacking the ability to get to luxury goods, designer things that you are interested in. Utilize all avenues of where you could potentially shop. Please don't keep it tunnel. Open it up. The kids department, the men's department, super markdown clearance thrift 
all of those things contribute to places where you can find great, great, beautiful things at a fraction of the price. When you are walking into this whole thing, whether you're new to designer luxury goods or whether you're a pro and you've been doing this like I have for many, 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 many years and you just simply love it. Personal style and choice is everything. And it is okay to wear things that they may not be on trend. I would rather fall on the side of personal style aesthetic versus looking like a cookie cutter and everything. You get the point, okay? Fashion is just that. It goes in, it goes out. It is meant to become unfashionable at a certain point. However, the name of the game is to keep your style endearing and endeavoring over the long haul. That's what people remember. They remember your style. They remember what your aesthetic is, what your vibe is beyond any bag you could possibly carry or any designer item. When it's done well and it's mixed together, whether it be high, low, low, high, or anything in the middle, bottom line is you've got your style identity nailed. There you have it. Life hacks for affording luxury and designer items. Pay yourself first. That is the biggest thing that I could tell you guys all about in terms of my experience and things that I enjoy when I go to make the decision to buy luxury. It doesn't matter if it's a house, a car, whatever. You have to have money aside for yourself first and all those things will come into place in the end. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the life hacks, tips that I gave you. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts and what do you do and what have you done for affordability if you don't want to drop a chunk. Let me know in the comments below. Like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I post videos every Sunday. If you do not want to miss out on anything that I post, you know what to do. Tap that and you'll receive notifications each time I post a new video. Links to my socials will be listed in the description box below. You can also head on over to my closet on Poshmark. If there's anything you see there that you would be interested in, please feel free to reach out to me there or you can DM me on Instagram. If there's anything you'd like for me to talk about related to thrift or fashion, bags, you name it, let me know. Guys, thank you so much for stopping by this week. Be safe. See you all next Sunday.